Good morning, everybody, or good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in, in the world today. Um, welcome to our weekly webinar. Um, my name is Tracy Collins. I'm the International Nursing Workforce Lead here um, for Devon. Um, and uh, I'm here today um, to actually present for Carly, who sadly is unable to join us this morning. Um, but some of you would have had the um, uh, would have met me sort of through your through your interview. So um, we've got a really exciting webinar for you today. Um, I'm going to just introduce my colleagues as well. So we have Jack Smiddy, who is with us every week, as you know. So Jack, did you want to give a give a wave? Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. And we have lovely Laura, who's also joining us again today. So Laura, did you want to introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. I'm in my second week of working with the team and I'm loving meeting you all and talking to you all over email. So hi, it's me. And we have a very important guest with us today who's going to uh, present very shortly. So this is Ariel and I'll allow Ariel to introduce himself. Hello, uh, good morning from the United Kingdom. Good afternoon if you are in the Philippines. So Ariel Anada, originally from Iloilo City, Philippines. Thank you very much, Ariel. So um, we will, so Ariel's going to, um, to give a, a wonderful presentation today um, around his journey here in the UK. Um, he's going to do a presentation and then at the end of that presentation, we'll invite you to put some questions into the Q&A box there. Um, just to say so that so Ariel works with the Filipino Nurses Association and we will be doing some regular um, sessions like this inviting other nursing associations to come and present and talk. So Nigeria Nurses Association, for example, the British India Nurses Association and the Zimbabwe Nurses Association. So just so to make sure that obviously you can meet some of our nursing associations from all of the nationalities across the world. So we have such a wonderful opportunity to do this and really, really exciting. And then following Ariel's presentation, um, I'm just going to do a little a little bit around um, English expressions and um, and conversation English um, and we'll have a little bit of fun around that. So so welcome. Please do put any questions in the box. We will do our best to answer those for you. And I'm going to hand over to Ariel. Hello, uh, thank you very much, uh, Tracy, uh, for the very kind uh, introduction, um, as well as the invitation to share my journey, my life in the United Kingdom um, and my career, and to talk about the uh, communities that I currently uh, lead in the UK. Um, so bear with me, I will share my slides. Okay, so Tracy, can I just check um, if you can see my first slide? We can, we can. Thank you, Ariel. Excellent. So ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, um, what you can see um, in the uh, middle of the screen is the Buckingham Palace, the official residence of uh, Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. And this is the first historical and very significant building that I visited when I arrived in the United Kingdom in 2002. The logos on the left of the screen represent the organization that I lead in the United Kingdom. So to put context, allow me to start with my life in the Philippines. So I was born to a poor family, but I was lucky to graduate as class valedictorian from high school, and that enabled me to gain a government scholarship under the late president, Cory Aquino, to study nursing. I graduated with the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 1993 from Central Philippine University, the first school of nursing in the Philippines. I work as a nurse supervisor and a training officer at Iloilo Mission Hospital and ultimately appointed as OIC Director of Nursing, Chief Nurse, in 2002, shortly before I left the country for the UK. I was studying for Master of Arts in Nursing, which unfortunately I did not complete before I left. 
So currently, I am a BAN 8B Divisional Lead for Practice Development and Education at Oxford University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. I am responsible for the continuing professional education of more or less 3,500 staff in neurosciences, orthopedics, trauma, specialist surgery, operating theaters, or we call it operating rooms in the Philippines, and the children's hospital. I am a registered uh, nurse and a registered teacher in the United Kingdom. And I am also an associate lecturer at Oxford Brookes University, where I teach leadership, operational management, and advanced research design modules. The photo at the bottom left corner of the screen is the John Radcliffe Hospital, one of the four hospitals of Oxford University Hospitals NSS Foundation Trust. And our trust employs more or less 14,000 staff from all over the world. The photo at the top corner is the new building, the West Wing, where my office is located. The photo on the top left corner of my screen was taken during autumn season. Autumn in the UK is from September to November, the season when I arrived in the UK. Although it looks beautiful, the street is empty. The bench is unoccupied. It was cold, quiet, lonely, and depressing. So despite being an OIC director of nursing in the Philippines, my first job in the United Kingdom was a BAN 3 healthcare assistant. The trust is very good at providing support at work. The problem was when I went back to my accommodation, shut the door and closed the curtains in my room, then is when the homesickness and loneliness really kick in. I suffered from separation anxiety. And two months later, I told my manager that I was not coping very well. And I was planning to go back to the Philippines. She was sad, but very supportive and suggested that I try to go out more, go out with friends and have fun. And of course, there was no COVID-19 at that time. So I followed her advice. And to my surprise, I found that most of my cohort felt the same way as me. So we started having barbecues, cooking pancet. We go out together and have fun. So initially, only five of us, then 12, then many more. So to cut the story short, that was the birth of the Filipino community of Oxfordshire. And now there are more or less 3,000 Filipinos living and working in Oxfordshire. For me, these are the three ingredients for success. Number one is willingness. The willingness to ask for help, the willingness to accept help, the willingness to wait, and patience is very important here. Remember that we don't harvest at the minute we plant. So sometimes we have to allow. Time is our biggest friend, but what I can tell you is never, never suffer in silence. Talk to someone, tell someone. The second ingredient for success for me is tenacity. Tenacity is our ability to keep going and keep going. Keep fighting, don't give up. Rest if you must but never quit because I believe that quitters never wins and winners never quit. And lastly, for me, resilience. Resilience is our ability to recover. And this is what I keep saying to my students and staff. One broken dream is not the end of dreaming. And if you want to reach the highest, start from the lowest. So as a community, we have loads of activities throughout the year. And of course, we were just interrupted by COVID-19. 
The photo at the top left is our celebration of the Philippine independence in 2019 with His Excellency Ambassador Antonio Lagdameo, the Philippine Ambassador in the United Kingdom, and the Lord Mayor of Oxford together with Professor Sir Jonathan Montgomery, our Chairman of the Board at Oxford University Hospitals and its Foundation Trust. We have also annual sports festival and community Christmas party. The photo at the bottom left of my screen was taken during the distribution of free Filipino hot meals to the National Health Service during the height of COVID-19 pandemic with the support of Oxford City and County Councils, uh, private uh, British and Filipino companies. We distributed 1,200 hot meals over 10 weeks. In April 2020, very sadly, I lost two of my good friends. They died because of COVID-19. They work at Oxford University Hospitals. At that time, there were more than 40 members of our community who were home quarantining. That was the toughest part of my life as the chairman of the community. So during those early months of the pandemic, around 20 Filipinos in the UK died because of COVID-19. I believe there are more than 60 now. So very quickly, we realized that we needed to network, to synergize with other Filipino nursing leaders across the UK. And that was the birth of the Filipino Nurses Association of United Kingdom. So we had our oath taking on the 25th of September 2020. So we're very new, uh, just a year old, uh, officiated by no less than His Excellency Ambassador Antonio Lagdameo. The Philippine Nurses Association UK was officially launched on 14th November 2020 with those honored guests on my on my screen. So we are registered with the um, CIC as a community interest uh, uh, group and with the Philippine Embassy. And this is our preamble of our constitution and bylaws. We, the Philippine nurses and nursing associates living and working in the United Kingdom, believing in the power of community spirit, camaraderie and organized governance, do hereby promulgate adopt and declare this constitution and by laws that shall advance, implement, and maintain our mission and vision underpinned by our core values of compassion, learning, uh, opportunities, visionary, integrity, empowerment, and respect, embodying the principles of freedom, equality, justice, and democracy, and the protection and promulgation of the welfare of our members. So when you come in the United Kingdom, um, if you become a member of the Filipino Nurses Association UK, it is free of charge, free membership, but we are here to support and guide you from the start of your career as you build your own um, uh, pathway, career pathways in the UK. So my experiences when I arrived in the United Kingdom were not isolated. They were experienced by almost all of us. This is what I referred to sometimes as we are strangers in paradise. Don't get me wrong, United Kingdom is not perfect, but I've been here for more than 19 years. So that speaks volume on how I, you know, I love this country. I'm very proud um, to be a Filipino British citizen and there's a lot of opportunities. In fact, I always say sky is the limit. We just need to work together. So learning from our live experiences, the FNA UK have been meeting and greeting Filipino newcomers to the country. And we are providing pastoral care as well as Filipino groceries. So for the last 12 months, what have we done so far? Well, um, we conducted training needs analysis among our members 
and uh, we have identified that the lack of career development and progression um, is one of the needs. Um, many of our colleagues applied for a higher position, uh, but unfortunately some of them did not pass the interview. So what we done is um, we run interview skills workshop. So I run the interview skills workshop every month and also enhancing leadership workshop every month so as you can see on my screen on the middle top uh, i'm running another leadership uh, workshop on sunday that's july 25 and that's free of charge we also run the uh, uh, financial education uh, we make sure that um, <laughs> um, you will not end up with uh, 24 credit cards or five bank loans uh, when you arrive in the uk um, we also uh, provide free OSCE sessions. You know, uh, you need to pass your OSCE to become registered uh, nurses in the UK. So OSCE stands for Objective Structured Clinical Examination, and we provide uh, free sessions every Thursday and Friday online from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So as you can see on my slide, Philippines has been consistently number one in providing nurses in the United Kingdom since 2017 until now. So the number will continue to increase as the United Kingdom healthcare systems will be needing around 50,000 nurses by 2025. And I'm sure that Philippines will be one of the major uh, countries for international recruitment. So in this slide, uh, you can see that there is still lack of uh, senior Filipino nurses in the uh, National Health Service. And that means that uh, there is still a concern in terms of lack of voice and representation. And that is why we are here, the Filipino Nurses Association, to change that. So just to give you an idea, the ranking of nursing in the UK is expressed in banding. So we have band five as your uh, newly qualified, if you like, newly registered with NMC, then band six, band seven, band eight A, band eight B, band eight C, band eight D, band nine, and very senior management. So as you can see on my screen, out of the 35,000 Filipino nurses in the UK, we only have one band nine in an interim position. One band eight D, five band eight C, and 16 of us band eight B. So as I said, we are working with the Chief Nursing Officer Group, the National Health Service Education and Improvement Team, the Florence Nightingale Foundation, the Royal College of Nursing, and other organizations to increase the number of senior uh, nursing leaders in the United Kingdom. So what have we achieved so far? So on the, these are just few of the many uh, accomplishments of the Filipino Nurses Association UK. The photo on the top left corner is May Parsons. She gave the first COVID-19 vaccination in the world. And May is a matron in one of the trusts here, and she is one of our regional directors. Top middle photo is Mini Klipach, and I hope you have seen Mini Klipach's uh, photos, interviews all over in the Philippines. She has been awarded by Her Majesty the Queen a British Empire Medal. Mini is our press relation officer. The guy on the top right corner of my screen is Raymond Padilla. He is one of our regional directors. Raymond is a nurse, and he was recently elected a city councillor in Leicester. Leicester is one of the cities in England. Under Raymond is me. I was one of the two winners of the National BAME Nurse of the Year 2021. Next to me is Francis Fernando, the founder of FNA UK, and he is also a joint winner of the BAME Leadership Award 2021. So for us, we believe that there, there is power um, if we come together, if we synergize. There are strength in our differences, and we believe that together 
we can serve better. And I am very, very most grateful uh, for this opportunity and really looking forward to be uh, networking with the trust and to you all. So for us, our definition of team is together, everyone achieves more. So thank you very much for your kind uh, attention. I will be very happy to answer some questions. Thank you very much, Ariel. That's a, a wonderful presentation. And, uh, you know, it's just it is just humbling just to, to read about your journey and experience here. It's just, you know, we're really honoured to have you here. Thank you. And um, please do type some questions and answers in in the Q&A box for Ariel. I know uh, we have lots of nationalities that have attended the webinar today, so please don't be shy because there are many synergies because between what Ariel has presented today from the Filipino community, but also synergies for Nigerian nurses here, for Indian nurses coming here, from Kenyan nurses coming here, so Caribbean nurses all around the world. So please, if you have any questions, please, please do do type type them in. I know everybody's being very, very shy and quiet this morning. <laughs> And please, please, no, no, no need. So please, please do do type some in. I think is there a new new question coming in? Somebody's written there. That's really, really inspiring, um, Ariel. Oh, thank you. And I think you know it's um, when Ariel and Francis and uh, Carly and I we met last week and. One of the things we really want to do is to to have an event where we can invite the the nursing associations down to to Devon or even whether it's virtual, you know, and we, we, we have a really, you know, sharing event and learning from each other and we make it fun as well and bring all the different cultures and nationalities together. I think it will be truly unique and it will be, you know, really exciting and, and wonderful. And we can, you know, we, we'll look to do that and make it a, a special occasion. And and it's it's special for, for us as a team within Devon because we have our very first nurse who's a Filipino leaving, but been working in Oman. And he flies today um, wow. from Oman. He's coming to the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital. He lands at Heathrow at four o'clock this afternoon and will arrive in Devon around um, 10 o'clock this evening by the time through immigration. But he's our first nurse from the Devon hub uh, coming through, which is just really exciting. And in August and September, we have more cohorts of nurses coming from all around the world. Uh, to Devon, the different hospitals in Devon. But today is a special day. This is our first, our first nurse um, arriving, which uh, which is which is great. So we'll uh, please, you know, join Nursing in Devon hashtag Nursing in Devon on Facebook Nursing in Devon because we will be doing some social media um, around this. So um, any questions coming through for Ariel? Ariel, there's no questions. Can you believe this? <laughs> I'm sure they've got loads of questions, but they're all being very shy. <laughs> uh, that's how I felt when I was new in in the in the country. Um, but what I'm keep saying to our newcomers is, um, uh, people in this country are very very accommodating, very very friendly. Um, but you need to communicate, you need to talk to people. Um, you know, when, when, when somebody said to me, Ariel, I don't have friends, my first question is, are you friendly? Do you go out? Um, so we need to talk and we need to have that conversation. And what I learned is if you don't ask, you don't get. It doesn't mean that if you ask, you will get everything. No. You know, but keep asking anyway. You no, know? um, um, mental health and well-being is one of my great passion. So I keep saying that it is normal uh, to feel lonely, uh, especially if you uh, are new in the environment. I mean, I used the word strangers in paradise in my presentation earlier, and that's how I felt when I came here. Um, but with proper support uh, from people around you. 
uh, the trust, your mentors, your uh, managers, you know, um, but also outside work is very important. Uh, so what Tracy said, uh, life is wonderful and we must enjoy it. It's not only work, work, work and study, studying, studying and earning a lot of money in the United Kingdom. No, it's not only that, but also the opportunity to mingle and learn other cultures. Devon is a wonderful and very beautiful place, you know, uh, and, 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 and taste some food as well. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. We have a question in the Q&A box saying how to join the skill sections of Ariel for OSCE. Right, OK, so when you arrive in the United Kingdom and again, this is uh, dependent on uh, trust, so you will have uh, between six to eight weeks uh, before you um, take your OSCE, uh, you will receive your OSCE review in your own trust or other trust commissioned uh, other organizations. So FNA UK provides the additional. So this is uh, to augment, but not to replace the OSCE sessions delivered by your employers or the trust. So when you are here, if you are a Filipino, then all you need to do is to um, search for our website and then there is a membership form online. Again, it's free of charge. Once you are in, then we send emails and then we give you oh, the Zoom definitely. details of our um, uh, sessions every Thursday and, and, and Friday. And uh, there you are. I mean, you will be learning with other inter well, this is Filipino specific, unfortunately, uh, because our um, capacity for the moment is only to accommodate Filipinos. Uh, but the plan and the intention is to open this up with other nationalities eventually. Thank you, Ariel. There's another question here for you from how did Ariel cope with separation anxiety. Actually, I also worry when I think of separation from my dad and other other members. I really don't know how to overcome it. Very good question. Um, again, what I said earlier is willingness. The first thing first is to acknowledge and accept that that you are not feeling all right and it's OK to feel not OK. So don't suffer in silence. Speak to someone. OK, so to your cohort, you must let your supervisor or your mentor uh, knows about it, your manager. OK, and then um, you. If you are in a group, um, you need to go out um, and I'm, I'm sure there's also Filipino community in Devon or other other nationality communities. Those are the group of people uh, that will help you. Depends if you are a believer again. So religion is another thing. So what I found is I visit the church, have a conversation with the parishioners, with the priest, um, and also with the advent of technology now, to be honest with you, um, you feel you are far, but actually we are we are near. So I I I uh, I, I rang my family and I used during my time we used uh, phone cards and I spent like 150 pounds worth of phone cards every month because I miss my family. Now with internet, with Skype, you know, uh, Messenger, you can call your family, you know, whenever you want to. So um, there are many things that you can do. What really helped me is going out with friends and I followed the advice of my manager. And again, it's the willingness. So if you look at, you can Google this, there is an adaptation curve or learning, you know, how to adapt in a foreign country where you have that uh, first emotion, you feel peak of your emotion, so much excitement, you know, that kind of thing. That is the honeymoon period, but there will be moment that that emotions will come down and that's normal. That is normal process. What you are experiencing at that point is the so-called disintegration. You will need to feel that, allow that emotions to happen, then you will start to reintegrate until you become fully integrated in the new country, in the new culture. So. We've been there, and as I said, with all our members and officers, 
exactly the same journey as mine, exactly as what you describe right now. But what we can assure you in the United Kingdom, we have well established communities like ours. You have your international recruitment team. You have your human resources, your occupational health. Every trust, every employers in the UK have their counseling service. They have their psychological department. All of these people, this a lot of support. All you need to do is just in confidence. Uh, of course, this is confidential matter. Have a conversation with someone. Please do not suffer in silence. I use the word suffer, a very, very strong word, but um, that's how I felt when I, I came to the UK. Thank you, Ariel. And, and in fact, we have one of our India nurses um, uh, has just um, put online here. That's really amazing that you are talking about mental health in India. It's really difficult to deal with mental health, but I'm so happy I'm going to work with you where mental health is so important. Indeed, indeed. Um, and we cannot separate it, um, you know, um, um, but we can only intervene and help if you tell us. So please have that conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know another nurse here is, but Mr. Ariel, you're providing groceries for the new Filipino nurses, but what about other nurses? So I'm, I'm assuming other nurses from different different countries there. And, and you know, like yourself, the nursing associations um, will, will all provide that, that support as well, um, as well as within each, each individual trust. Um, so each hospital, uh, you know, there will be food park parcels and packages um, delivered, you know, to to accommodation through the quarantine periods. But um, but also, you know, um, uh, there are specific shops, aren't there, that um, that sell, you know, the, the traditional food. So you're able to buy, you know, spices or your different how, how you cook your food, you know, so um, something that was really important, Ariel, which uh, it really, um, uh, you know, it was really quite important last week where within the UK, we, we think we're doing the right thing when our new nurses arrive and um, we'll, you know, give bread and uh, baked beans. And um, what was the other thing you said, Ariel? It was you know, typical British, but actually it's not the types of food that you know you, you need potatoes Pota potatoes yes yeah <laughs> and, and we think we think we're doing the best don't we and and you know but actually it's really not what you need um you know you need the rice and and the spices and some of that food you know that that's local to to yourselves um you know to really help and uh, it was a really important lesson for you know Carly and I to to make sure that you know when we're supporting the nurses you, you know we really um make sure we, we, we do that um th there's Tracy, uh, can I, yes yes sorry to interrupt can i um before i forget can i respond to the question about the uh filipino groceries uh to yes. the filipino newly uh, arrived in the uk so um initially we the officers and members we are contributing a little bit of money from our own pocket in order to buy for these groceries. So that is why we cannot afford to provide for everybody, but only for, for, for the Filipinos. Now, this has been picked up by Florence Nightingale Foundation and the Health Education England and the International Recruitment Team with Duncan's team. Um, and I am very, very proud that we applied for funding and we were funded by the Florence Nightingale Foundation. So we are now using that money instead of using our own pocket money to buy for groceries. Now, my understanding is not only Filipino Nurses Association who applied, and been given funding. So I believe that other associations, the Indians, Malawians, and others, um, I think the Hong Kong Philippine, uh, the Hong Kong Association as well. Uh, we have also there the Spanish the diaspora. So I remember when we meet with Florence Nightingale, there's 11 different organizations in the UK who received uh, this funding. So when you arrive in the UK, so uh, just uh, search and explore. Uh, with your communities, uh, and I'm sure they will signpost you to the association. Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank you. So I'm just going to move on to um, for the next sort of few minutes of our um, webinar on conversational English, a refresher. 
Um, and I'm just going to ask Jack if he can, yep, and start the, the the presentation. And I'm sure Ariel, from your perspective as well, please do um, just because this will will resonate. I, I, I'm sure. So. Carly wanted to, to do a little session today just in terms of some of the expressions, um, you know, in, in English, but some of important um, elements in terms of your accountability and registration um, with the NMC. And in the UK, we have a tendency to use a lot of abbreviations. Um, but actually, it's very important when you're coming to write your patient records and, and in the notes that actually Abbreviation, abbreviations aren't aren't used. There's a lot of um, uh, issues or incidents that have actually happened, um, you know, across across the NHS, where actually it's down to conversation or communication and the importance of writing correctly. So, um, on to the next slide, please, Jack. So to start with, um, Carly has put this here, a little bit of fun, saying, "Doctor, I need your help." And there are little expressions in terms of describing how, how we in the UK uh, describe sort of parts of our, our body and what it means. So you may hear some of these expressions. So my nose is runny or my eyes are dry and watery or I have toothache. I think I have a cavity. Or, I cut my finger. The bleeding won't stop. My waist is getting bigger. Am I overweight? My knees keep locking. That's interesting, isn't it? Locking knees. It's where your knees just don't bend or move uh, as freely. My chest feels tight. I can't breathe. And you'll hear that when you're looking after your patients, you know, particularly you know, if a patient's being at risk of heart disease or having breathing problems, you know, they'll often say my chest is feeling tight. So please be um, be, be mindful and, and aware when you hear that, because it could be breathing problems. It could be asthma. It could be the start, obviously, of a cardiac event. On to the next slide, please, Jack. So. What's really important, and we know a number of nurses, um, you know, it's probably been a long time since you sat your OET or you sat your IELTS exam, and you may not have been practicing speaking in English, you know, very much over the over the last few months. So it's important to speak clearly, slowly, take a deep breath and always ask if you don't understand. Next slide, please. Jack, thank you. So top tips. So speak and use technology. Try and listen and read out loud. That's really important. So when you're at home on your own or before you come to the UK, try and read a British newspaper or a book in English and read it out loud to yourself or to others and try and learn a new word every day. And one of the top tips we hear from many of our colleagues is try and watch a film in English, particularly if there's subtitles there. So you can practice, you know, speaking whilst you're watching, watching the film and make friends. Really important to practice speaking to each other in English and do activities in English, it will really help you with your confidence because when you first come to the UK, you will have, especially here, we, we do speak very fast and there may be words you will miss. Talking to people on the telephone, answering bleeps, you know, there's a lot of conversation that takes place and please do, don't feel shy and don't feel you're being silly or stupid or that you should know because you're new and people expect you to ask. But sometimes when we're busy, people forget. So please do say, excuse me, please. Can you repeat? I don't understand. It's absolutely fine to do that and it's safe too. Next slide, please, Jack. So as Carly has put here, communication, ask for information to be repeated. And if you don't understand, never be scared to ask. 
and always we say to people, please speak slower. I don't understand. Next slide, please. So a little piece here from the Royal College of Nursing and the NMC, which talks about the importance of not using abbreviations um, when you're when you're writing your your patient notes. So we'll just go on to the next slide. It's got some lists of some of the abbreviations which you will see uh, in everyday in everyday work. So you'll see the hashtag sign. So we use that here as a fracture means a fracture or A&E accident and emergency or now it's commonly known as ED. So the emergency department. So AM means morning and PM afternoon. Atrial fibrillation is AF. BD, for example, when you're giving medication, it means twice a day or two times a day. And BMI, body mass index, blood pressure, BP, bowels open, BO. And there's another meaning for, for BO, isn't it? Where actually it can mean actually body odour. So it's important in context to remember that. And BNO, bowels not open. CT scan, computerised tomography. Next slide, please, Jack. And again, some other common abbreviations. So just some here, ECG, electrocardiogram, or DVT is a deep vein thrombosis, and doctor, you'll see written as DR. And it's easy, isn't it? Because you've got DNR, which is do not resuscitate, or even DNAR is do not attempt resuscitation. So there's some really important um, abbreviations there to understand and to learn and to, to practice but you will see this written a lot and spoken a lot in the NHS and it, it is some of it, it we do forget that actually not everybody uh, understands some of these abbreviations so please do ask uh, and make sure that when you write in the notes you write it in full okay next slide please Jack thank you now this is um, a YouTube video which um, I believe has been recommended by lots of um, organisations and some of the feedback from the pastoral support teams in the hospitals and our international nurses. This is a link to uh, a programme called Friends um, and it, it's spoken in American English. Uh, they do have subtitles but it's really helpful in terms of um, you able to, you know, listening and speaking and some of the words and expressions that are used in that. So I think it's only a couple, is it a couple of minutes uh, long, Jack? How, how, how long is it? That's probably the long one, isn't it? But we have, we have about the link. About 10 minutes. Is it about, about 10 minutes? I think, um, you know, maybe we just just show a couple of couple of minutes of it and then we've got the link for you, um, which will be uploaded on YouTube to please go and have a look at this in your own time. Did you want to just just maybe play a couple of couple of minutes of it? Is it? Oh, I'm not sure if we can. Is this the one with the it's got sub subtitles with it or? Can't can't hear that, Jack, that one. I've put the link into the uh, chat so that they, you can pick it up that way. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when what what's you know, I mean, it, it, we can smile about it now. But when when I first did international recruitment and our first nurses, it was, this was in 2014 um, and the nurses, I and Laura, you'll probably remem remember this for Torbay. We did big European international campaigns to begin with before we went overseas to the Philippines and then uh, latterly I spent a lot of time in, in, in India. Um, and one of my Italian nurses, he was working on a care of the elderly ward and the patient said to him, I need to spend a penny. Now, my nurse at that time, he went to his pocket and took out a penny, a coin. And what the patient 
meant and wanted was to go to the toilet. He wanted to actually pass urine. And it's an expression we, we often use in the UK, you know, want to spend a penny. And it's little things like that which are so important. And the other, another one is we can't see the wood for the trees because we can be so busy that we can't always see the next steps. But again, you know, our international nurses didn't understand, can't see the wood for the trees. So there's lots of learning for us in the UK, you know, when, when we're working with you to, to think when we speak about what we're saying and the meaning behind that, because translation can, you know, think expressions and words can be lost in translation. And Ariel, did you did you find this when you first came to the UK? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, and I'm happy to share some of my experiences. Um, and my suggestion as well is you must have a very small notebook, a packet notebook that you bring with you all the time when you come to work. And at the minute you hear a new word, write it down. And if there is an opportunity to ask and clarify what that word means, do that, or if not, do that later. But every new word that you hear, write it down, and that will work. Um, I remember when um, I was looking after uh, patients with three chest drains, and the consultants said, Ariel, remove one, that, uh, remove the, one of the chest drains, and then walk away. Then I was petrified because I have three chest drains. I don't know which one shall I remove. So I run and then hold the hand of the consultant. And I said, could you hold which chest drain would you like me to remove? Because I was so scared that I might remove a wrong chest drain. And that consultant salute me. The, the consultant said, thank you so much, Ariel. You're very, very safe practitioner because you did not understand my instruction. You clarified and you never put uh, the safety of the patient at risk. So Tracy is absolutely right. If you misheard uh, or did not hear properly or did not understand the instruction, clarify, clarify and clarify. Uh, the other thing is, um, <laughs> I remember the patient said, oh, um, I have a run. So uh, I, I was very confused and I, I, I told my mentor, oh, could you please help me? The patient's trying to escape, the patient trying to run away from the ward. But actually the patient has a uh, an accident. They call it accident, but they have the diarrhea, excuse the language, uh, but that's what it is. So these are colloquial terms um, that you need to, to know. Um, Again, in the Philippines, so in the bus, for example, we bought a ticket on the bus. Um, um, the, uh, the the uh, driver said it's a single or, 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 or double. So we have the single and return. So it's very, very confusing because my colleague said, I am single, I'm not married, I'm not double. So you see that, that is the start of the, uh, the argument. Accent is again a big issue here, the, the accent. So when I was new, um, the telephone rang. So I pick up the telephone and then the lady at the end of the telephone said to me, uh, do you have a wall clock? So I look at the wall clock and then I said, yes, we have a wall clock and said, is your wall clock working? And I said, yes, the wall clock is working. And then she said, can I please speak to your wall clock? And at that point, I was very, very confused. And I said, why would you like to speak to the wall clock? The wall clock is fine. It's on the wall, it's working. And then the lady said to me, could you please give the telephone to somebody who speak English and understand English? And then I said, I speak English, I understand English. What I didn't understand is the caller was looking for a ward clerk. A ward clerk, I misheard it as a wall clock, a clock on the wall. So you see, very, very simple thing, very, very simple thing, but you need to, uh, as what Tracy said, um, communicate and clarify the information before you react. I think I overreacted. Thank you, Ariel. It's so, I had to smile because it is, it's so easy to do. <laughs> It is, isn't it? We hear it all the time, um, you know, but uh, so please do practice and, and have a listen to, to friends, you know, when you have a few minutes and with the subtitles, um, you know, you, you, you will enjoy that. 
So we have five minutes left of um, our webinar. So is there any questions that you want asking? Please do continue to put them into the chat box. I'm just going to ask my colleagues, Jack or Laura, if there's anything you would like to update or say. No, no, no. Uh, Carly is um, and Laura have got some one to ones in the diaries being scheduled now for our nurses due to fly to the UK over the coming weeks. Um, and, you know, we will be um, I, 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 we've just spoken to a nurse this morning as well, which is wonderful from Nigeria coming over and she's very, very excited. Um, Carly will also be scheduling some group one-to-one uh, -one session, well one-to-one -one, but group sessions so that you will meet your cohort of nurses coming over to each hospital um, so you can start to get to know each other and you know start to message each other on Facebook or whichever means of, um, of communication you use through social media just so you can start to bring and build those relationships so you're all together you're all in the here's an English expression all in the same boat which actually what it means is you're, you're all in the same situation together. You're all new, flying to the UK, all starting in a new hospital, leaving home for the first time, etc. So it's done uh, as a supportive, um, you know, way for you. And um, and of course, then when you when you arrive, you you won't all be complete strangers when when you arrive together here in the UK. So I hope you've enjoyed your webinar today and um, Ariel's wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Ariel. Honestly, you are a true inspiration. And I think for everybody, what's really important to take away from that is from Ariel's journey of starting here in the UK as a healthcare assistant to where he is now and that progression through the career and the opportunities, you know, of being an international nurse and those opportunities that are here for you. And this huge work underway, as Ariel has mentioned, and, and us within Devon, one big passion of mine is to make sure we have a career pathway in place for our international nurses like yourself to be able to develop and follow your dreams and always follow your dreams and don't ever let anybody stand in the way and put you down. And I can say that hand on heart myself. You know, I'm following my dreams by doing this job, which is what I absolutely love. And if I can influence in any way to inspire you to come here and to follow your dreams as a nurse and to make a better opportunity for your families back home, then I know I've done my job well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you all personally when you arrive. Um, Ariel, thank you so, so much. You are absolutely, truly amazing. And I'm looking forward to our special event that we can have with our nursing associations and we will make you the cream tea with the cream on first. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tracy, just very quickly, I uh, put my email address on the chat box. Um, if uh, people would like to have a conversation um, um, Indian, Filipinos or other nationalities, we can signpost you. Just send me an email, uh, president at fnauk.org.uk. Uh, personally, and on behalf of the Filipino uh, Nurses Association UK, um, big, big, big thank you, uh, Tracy and team and uh, Turby and South Devon NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, really grateful. We can't wait to visit your place and let this be a beginning of our more lasting, productive uh, relationship because we are all here to look after our staff who will be looking after our people, the National Health Service and Social Care. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Bye. See you next week. And goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>